Okay, we're going to put new rotors on a 1995 Lincoln Town Car. We're in the front of the car. This is going to be a change of the front rotors. I am not an expert at this, but I believe I can do it. And I uh, hope you enjoy it and follow uh, along. <clears throat> what I did was I put new brake shoes on it. And I didn't think I needed to change the rotors. And now I can feel in the pedal that the rotors should have been changed. So I only wore the brakes out probably very slightly over a week. And um, we're going to go in and we're going to change it. We're going to take the uh, brake caliper off. There's two bolts. One is right here and one is down below. And they are 13 milliliters. Millimeters, I'm sorry. And uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. Now this job should be a little easier because I just had these off and I lubricated these uh, bolts very slightly. This should just pull right off. They just kind of drop into position here. Okay. Just kind of fits right in. Alright, so we'll take these out. Yeah, they still look okay. Only been in there about a week. Now we're going to have to uh, remove this device here to get to this. Uh, see, the rotors. You know, we used to like the old cars, right? So the rotors just, they just sit on these cars. There's this, so all you got to do is just get this piece off. Now just to show you what I did before I put this all away. Let's see if I can get a shot of this. I'll pull it off. These, this little device here kind of floats the whole ca caliper, it looks like. Or the whole caliper in here, like when the brakes wear down and things, it floats it. And this slides in right back here. And you you know there's like a weather, you know, be sure it's in there. I don't know if it'll show up there. See, but this kind of goes in and out in this one too. And the caliber floats in there as you use the brakes and the brakes wear out. So a lot of times these are car gets old, these need pull, just pulling them out. What I did, and I hope it's correct, I just pulled it out and Got some steel wool and cleaned it up and lubricated it and, and put it back in. Like I said, I just I just had these off and didn't want to change the rotor, but now I'm I'm thinking about doing it. You know, so all right, let's see what uh, bolt this one takes. Uh, see, I left the uh, socket on there, but there's one right here and one where the socket is that holds uh, this device right here on. So let me loosen that up. Oh, I'm sorry, that is uh, 18 millimeters. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're gonna try to break those bolts, you're gonna need to put something like a bar 
over your ratchet to get more leverage. I mean, they are on there, buddy. We'll take a look at them when I get them off. Okay. There it is. And these are the bolts. They are pretty strong. And they were in there. My guess is this is the original rotor that was on the vehicle, but I really don't know. 130,000 miles. I bought the car when it had 70. So we'll... Now what I'm going to do is, before I put this back together, I'm going to put a little bit of axle grease on these so they don't bind up so tight next time. Now this is the old rotor, so that piece is off and all you do is... I'm trying to do it with my left hand here, let's see what... There, it just comes right off. And that's all there is to it. Could be the original one. It may be warped a little bit, I don't know, but it, I could feel something in the pedal that wasn't right. Now let's take a look at the rotors. Okay, this is the new rotor. When I bought this rotor, this is from Advance Auto. They were listed at, I think it was $52 each. When I buy anything from Advance Auto, I, I never walk in the store and buy it. I buy it on the internet. And then I walk in the store and buy it. And I tell you why. I was able to save 20% on these rotors by just ordering ahead of time. And then you print your confirmation and there's a barcode. You walk in, give it to the guys, and boom, that's it. So these, these, both of these were like, oh, let me find the receipt. Okay, here's the receipt. Two of them were $102. And because I ordered on the internet and I found a code that's P... 20, that's P like Paul, and 20, it knocked 20 dollars off in tax. So two rotors were eighty-seven dollars and thirty-two cents, and and I did the same with the brakes when I bought them. So you you know new rotors and brakes. Let's see, the brakes were, I think were like thirty dollars or something like that, between twenty and thirty. So you could do this job for you know eighty-seven and thirty dollars. Now somebody told me, and I don't know if it's true, but I always do it. When I buy new rotors, I always get brake cleaner and spray them. Because someone told me there's an oil on them, and you don't want that oil on the brake pads. So I always just spray all around this part, and then back here, and then wipe it with a paper towel. So let's get these back on. Alright, we're going to... I could probably put this all back together without pushing the... Um, the piston in on the caliper, but I'm going to do it as if we're going to need to do that, which we probably will. You need a C-clamp. That's kind of what this is. This is from Harbor Freight. It's a six-inch one. Now, when you do this, you want to keep an eye on how much brake fluid is in your master cylinder, because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pushing the fluid kind of backwards, and you got to watch it doesn't come out over here. So it's below the top so I think we should be okay. It's probably when we hit the second one we'll have problems. Now what we want to do is push this big round thing which is the piston back all the way back as far as it can go. Now sometimes when you buy new brakes this, these little clamps here are included with the brakes and sometimes not. Now these are from the last time that I put uh, Bendix brakes on here. We were supposed to have some lifetime warranty and then Advance quit selling them. But I was able to get another pair on the internet with the warranty but by then I already bought the other ones. So I'm going to you know, kind of leave this in place unless you have a new one you feel like replacing. Now I'm going to set the C-clamp up and we're going to push that back in manually. You're going to have to forgive whatever photography uh, mistakes I make because I'm by myself here. Now, you, know, you find a, a solid spot in back of this thing. This will go all the way into the center. Now 
on some of the newer cars, you, there's a device that makes this spin as it goes in. But we shouldn't have that. Point. Now if you look right where, let me see here, right where my finger is, you'll see that that inner piston is sticking out a little bit. Now when we get done, it should be, we shouldn't have that. Just crank it down. It'll slowly go back in. It's a little tight, but the clamp can do it. All the way in. Okay. If you look, that lip's gone. Because we pushed it all back in. And take it off. This is a 95 Lincoln, so... It, I don't know what year they started putting those uh, pistons that need to spin. Okay, let's put the rotor back on. I probably should have just put this damn rotor on the first time I did this job. Instead of trying to do it on the cheap. Plus I was in a hurry. Okay. Time for this piece. Now this is the big monster bolts, and I put a little bit of grease on them. That should go right in position. See, now you could kind of get a look at this how huh? this this kind of makes the calibers float in there. You want to be sure those move nice and good. And if it doesn't move, see, so just pull it out. And uh, I have a little bit of grease in it. Whether that's approved or not, I don't know, but I do. Like I said, I'm not an expert. Backyard mechanic. That should be good. Here's the brake shoes. You can see they're pretty good. I just had them on, I think, a week. Now, this is the easy part. These just kind of drop right in position. So, one here, one there, neither in. See this little um, top piece? Like this little slot that's going to fit in that clamp that goes up there. Or in front of the car. Let's get this drop right on. Now right, let's check the weather seals. The weather seals on these. Just have them in pretty good. The pads in tight. Now what I'm going to do is put this um, put the bottom bolt in first. This should give me the leverage I need to push the rest of it down. And be sure that this hose is not twisted. You didn't twist something up on the way down because this kind of has to ride up and down with the, the wheel. So let me get one of the bolts in. i hold this camera a little backwards there. And it goes right in like that, right there. And this is this, um, <laughs> it's everything backwards when I'm holding the camera. This is um, that thing that's going to kind of float and it bolts on. And this is the top part that I do not have a bolt in yet. So let me get that one started.
it should just roll right in. There it goes. Okay, let me uh, tighten it up. Tighten the bottom one. Let's see, this I forgot. This is the um, 13 millimeter. See it floating around. Ah, see. catches. Because you're playing it now. And when you look, you're going to go, geez, I, I did something wrong because this whole thing's loose. But that's that's normal. Because when the, the, the wheel goes on, see, it's going to hold it in position. Now I'm gonna guess that that brake fluid came up a little bit. I can remember where it was. Yeah, just a little bit. It was kind of here somewhere. Now do not press the brake pedal yet. We have to do the whole other side exactly like this and then we're gonna go in and press the brake to the floor. And you're gonna think you have no brakes at all but it, what it is is the fluid is going back into the piston to put it back in a position that this will, you know, kind of be a little closer to the um, the rotor. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I don't think it's necessary to video that one, but I mean that gives you an idea how to do it. Let's see if we can get a shot of the brakes in that position. There's the clamp. It kind of I'm going to guess it keeps it from squealing, holds them in position a little better too. So that's it, drop the pads in, take the back one off, put the rotor on, drop the pads in, throw this back down. I'm going to spray this again to get all the extra grease that might be on it, and this side's done. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.